Switched On IT. This is Barry. We are coming to you live from the studios in Toowoomba in Queensland and we will have with us this morning our participant Doug from Sydney and Ray from the United States. They are coming into a live stream in here into our studio. Um, I think that we will go straight to them. G'day Barry. Hey Barry. G'day. How are you today? I'm well. Terrific day down here in Sydney. Is it? What's it like in I'm the great. US? Uh, beautiful. It's actually a little overcast skies, but uh, otherwise uh, pretty pretty temperate weather. Good. Okay. All right, because it's your summer at the moment, isn't it? Uh, summer hasn't quite started yet, but yeah, we're, we're at the tail end of spring and, and uh, just nearing the, the start of summer. Yeah, great. All right. Um, now, um, what are we talking about today? Barry, I think we're going to um, step through the Google G Suite um, service. So, uh, you know, there's, a, there's uh, I guess, um, businesses are, are choosing either to run with, with Microsoft and their hosted exchange email service, and there's associated services around that. Um, and, of course, there's Google G Suite, which, is, which has got a terrific share of the market, and there are a lot of businesses that uh, stay within that uh, ecosystem. So... Today, Ray and I are going to be talking about uh, G Suite particularly and um, what a lot of the people would regard as the key advantages and the most killing, compelling reasons to, uh, to use that as their, as their email platform and also a platform that for their other collaboration tools and some of the business applications that they would use on G Suite. Terrific. Sounds good. Um, we'll turn it over to you and uh, you can take it away for us. Good day. Um, and g'day, Ray. I hope it's a I hope it's a great day over there in Washington. You there? It is. It Excellent. is. Good. Good work. Now, um, Ray, I know that you're you're a user of, of G Suite personally and in your in your business. Um, so it's it's obviously working very well for you. Would let let's just have a look at some of the you know the top line features there and, and tell us about you know how you find them and, and what you see other businesses uh, enjoying about them. So, you know, maybe we can touch on um, email and the, and the collaboration tools such as the video conferencing and um, online chat, those sorts of services. How do they, how do they work for you and, and what's your experience of them? Yeah, sure. So I'll start off by saying that I, I, I have been uh, serving as one of the Google Small Business Advisors, and my particular category is productivity. And so G Suite fits right within that category of the of the business productivity tools that Google provides for small business owners to be able to run uh, using various Google services. You know, Google has nearly 600 different products and services, but G Suite itself are those few that are bundled together and are capable of being used by business owners to uh, run, run. You know, I, I call it kind of Google as infrastructure. You know, it's basically the back end of your business, uh, very similar to the way in which we talked about Microsoft Office 365 in the last episode. You're able to kind of make a choice between one of those platforms, and sometimes you'll choose both. Uh, and I and I've seen businesses who have chosen to have some parts of the Office platform available to them and some parts of the G Suite platform. Uh, so Google itself. Uh, G Suite itself is uh, formerly known as Google Apps for Work or Google Apps for Business. Some people have heard it as both terms. The, uh, the suite itself is a little bit more than a dozen applications that have been blended together. Um, you know, Gmail and, and have a Gmail account. And in the G Suite world, uh, that is the uh, primary tool that most people get G Suite for. They get it because they need uh, business class email. And so uh, G Suite provides you with email. It provides you with something akin to Slack called Hangouts Chat. Uh, it provides you with video conferencing akin to Skype. It's, the, it's called Hangouts Meet. And then from there, it provides you with all the other various Google products and services that you probably know and have, have used over time in some way, shape, or form. Google Drive, Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Sheets, Google Calendar, Google Tasks, Google Keep. You name it, and all of the Google products are are in some way, shape, or form bundled into it into into G Suite in some way, shape, or form. Some are part of the core services, and then all the 
uh, ancillary products are um, able to be turned on. Like Blogger, if you wanted to, wanted to launch a blog for your business, if you wanted to run a, um, a Google Voice account and, and do telecommunications type services, uh, you can you can go ahead and enable Google Voice within G Suite. So it's a it's a pretty wide ranging product, and of course it integrates with many many other tools similar to the way that uh, the Microsoft Office 365 platform does, and uh, and you can actually use your G Suite account as a login function for many other services as well. Just you know almost anywhere that you can log in via Google, you can use your G Suite account to be able to be that login for your business. So you have some level of security and control over that. That's yeah, that's very interesting. And in terms of some of those those services with the uh, the video conferencing and the and the and the telephony, um, I, I guess being based in the states, they're they're available for use there. Are you familiar with whether their wide, you know, their availability is widespread or is it um, pretty much locked down to to North America? In as far as you know, uh, as far as I know, it's actually uh, broadly available. I know that I know that they have had issues with scaling out to other countries, and uh, and so I'll when as we're talking here, I'll look to see whether or not uh, it's in what countries it might be limited to. But from my last look, it was actually broadly available across the planet. Um, you know, obviously they're always going to be limited by uh, jurisdictional issues like with China or or Russia and that kind of thing. But um, but I think it it is pretty much broadly available. Right, I see. Okay. Um, now, in terms of the the collaboration tools, are they? Um, you know, I can see that you've got calendar there, and uh, um, obviously your contacts. Are they are they sh are they shareable between you know one user and the other user in the same in the same business? Absolutely. Actually, that's one of the most powerful components of of the G Suite platform is that. As, a, as the G Suite administrator, the, the person running the entire G Suite installation, you have the ability to turn on and off what is shareable and not shareable within the organization, you know, from some high level uh, security privileges perspective. But then from there, your staff, you and your staff are able to then share things like a communal calendar so that you can have a conference room calendar so that you can uh, reserve assets like the projector or the presenter mouse, or if there's a traveling laptop or a car, say that you have a fleet of vehicles in your business. I, I certainly know several businesses who have a calendar and they basically check in and check out the uh, the vehicles in the fleet and it's all seen through Google Calendar and, and everybody has access to that on their phone as well as on their, their desktop. So it's a very, very seamless uh, tool uh, to be able to do that, but you can share different types of, uh, of folder structures within G Suite. I know we talked about that last uh, last time uh, with regard to some of the issues with OneDrive uh, sharing on the folder level and that kind of thing. But in the Google Drive world within G Suite, you can certainly share uh, folders. You can share uh, specific uh, documents as well and, and live collaborate uh, on those documents while you're creating them. And uh, you can do all of that within a video, a live collaborative environment within the within the Hangouts Meet platform. So you can be live on camera like we are and editing a document with a couple other dozen people at the same time and uh, all all in real time, which is actually quite brilliant. Yeah, no, I've, I've, I've used that feature myself and, and particularly the, uh, you know, simultaneous online editing of documents is, is, a, is a wonderful feature when you've got people working remotely. Um, yeah. Now, and you're not limited of... because you can you can go ahead and uh, you know like in in uh, several cases I've I've actually been in a situation where uh, we have clients who are on the Microsoft Office platform and uh, and so they don't want to give up their documents in uh, their native Word format or native Excel format or whatnot and so we actually pair them up with an Office 365 account they have their Google Drive and G Suite set up and. Because Google Docs itself and, and, and Google Sheets can read Word, Word and PowerPoint and, you know, and, and other Office files, uh, the big ones, Excel, Word, and, and PowerPoint, you can just keep them in their native format within Google Drive, which is akin to OneDrive, and then have those locally opened from your desktop 
within Word or Excel or PowerPoint. And now you get kind of the best of both worlds. So we certainly see people who, who want to stay, you know, because they're comfortable with knowing the Microsoft products, they can do that while still interfacing with uh, Google and the G Suite world so that they have the shareability and the extensibility of the G Suite platform. Yeah, that's. I think that's interesting. That that um, well between Google and Microsoft, that that they've made that able to work. I guess it's uh, ultimately in the definitely in the best interests of of the the, the users. Um, and you know, and you, both companies. You, those... you know, it, it benefits them both. You know, it's it's like having a, a Starbucks on one corner and a Dunkin' Donuts on the other. Uh, you know, they 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 try to act like they're working against one another, but in reality, they work well together. <laughs> A great analogy. I, I, I wouldn't mind another coffee too. Um, and just a quick question also on the uh, on on those other uh, Microsoft applications. Um, certainly in 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 Australia, so many people in small business uh, are, are very reliant on on Outlook. It seems that they they struggle having a browser interface for their email, and they just want everything to be through Outlook. So, can you tell us um, a little bit about? You know how you view the integration between Outlook and G Suite. Um, you know whether it works sweetly and people can happily continue to use it. And also, um, you know maybe a little bit about the, the businesses that just say we're we're going to actually um, not require or or we're going to just stay within the G Suite ecosystem and and not really express any desire for any of those Microsoft products, whether it's the um, you know the Office 365 email, or or even the entire Office suite. What do, what do those customers look like? Sure. So we have we have a lot of businesses actually on both sides of that coin. Uh, many many companies use Outlook and and just basically add their their G Suite email accounts to Outlook, and they're good to go. Uh, it's a it's an easy authentication process. Uh, it's it's the same. A walkthrough that you do when you add an Exchange account to Outlook, and uh, and you just sort of add the account, and the email then is IMAP uh, compliant. So it just basically maps all the folders that are in G Suite in in Gmail. We call those labels, but they're just basically IMAP folders, and and then those get mapped to your uh, to your to your local Outlook installation, and they pull right in. And most applications, most email applications in the email software today, are are able to uh, you know recognize a Google account and uh, easily synchronize those. So you really have no holding back in terms of of being able to use G Suite email in almost any email software. Uh, internally, we use an application called Newton, and it used to be called Cloud Magic. And we really like it. It's a subscription-based email software, so not everybody really likes that idea. But we found it to be a solid email application with lots of really great integrations, like with Evernote and other applications uh, like Trello. So we we just use it, and it has things like your the ability to snooze email. It's got a very clean interface, and yeah, so we like using it. But you don't need to. You could easily just use the Gmail app and log into your G Suite account. And do that, and there are actually uh, several uh, of our clients are completely, uh, you know, browser and mobile app based, and they've just chosen to um, limit that mostly for security reason, right? Reasons because if they are using uh, everything within the G Suite ecosystem, they know that they have control over those pieces fundamentally, and uh, that keeps them more secure. Uh, you know, I always tell the story uh, uh, several years ago now. It's going back several years ago now. But I had a, I had one of my program managers, a project managers, that is, um, who passed away on me, uh, and uh, she passed away on a Friday evening. And I was, I was waiting for her to call me back because we were working on this very big project together. And it's thanks to G Suite that I was able to, you know, within about five minutes, you know, shut down, suspend her user account, transfer all the documents to one of our other project managers for this very big project. And then I was able to actually uh, spend time, uh, one, dealing with the loss of a, of a friend. Uh, you know, she was not just a staff member. She wasn't just an employee. She was a friend. And, um, and, and being there for everybody, as opposed to having to worry about the, the business, right? The business could, could survive because G Suite had the fundamental underpinnings to be able to manage users and uh, all the data that was sitting on her computer. That was all just minutes to deal with. And then I could then convert my attention 
shift my attention to the things that really mattered. And so that's the kind of power that G Suite gives you as an ad administrator within the platform is, is to be able to control the data so that you're able to better focus on the things that you have to do in your business. That's interesting. And that's a very key um, consideration, certainly in, in our country about you know, being able to control the data and being able to ensure that uh, users and, and users' devices are, are able to be controlled and, uh, you know, their, their, their access to company assets is being able to be, you know, controlled to a very granular level. So, so you've got all that available in the, in the G Suite service. And uh, um, I, I'm not familiar with uh, Newton that you mentioned. So that sounds to me like that's a... Um, kind of an equivalent to Outlook, perhaps, you, you know, let us know on that. And also, I'm, I'm guessing that also means that you're able to uh, work in an offline state and you've got access to a lot of the, a lot of the, um, you know, the files and the information that otherwise would be only available to, to you if you're online. Is, is that the case? Yeah, so Newton only is only email, so different than some of the other applications that, like Outlook, that has email, uh, calendar and, and other types of, you know, like task management and so on and so forth built in. Newton is purely email and the, uh, the function allows you to, of course, access the Gmail database. So you do have a, an offline capacity so that you're able to, uh, you know, email back and forth. Uh, most people don't know this, but within at least the Chrome browser, and, and I believe this happens also in Firefox and, and several of the other major browsers, you, you can go into offline mode in Gmail as well as Google Drive. So if you have a G Suite account, you have to set it up. But once you've set this up, you can then uh, be on a plane or be disconnected from the internet. And whatever email has already been downloaded to your system, you're able to reply, uh, you know, hit send. And then the next time it goes online again, it will then go ahead and execute and send those emails on your behalf. So you're not limited within the browser even today of being able to transact email even when you're offline, as long as you have that set up already uh, you know, taking place. So if you have Gmail offline as well as Google Drive offline access enabled, uh, Google does the best job it can to download the, those locally within to, into the browser so that you're able to then access and uh, transact email and look at your files. You can work on Google, Doc, Google Docs and, and Google Sheets and, and other documents within the Google inter inter interface. Um, even though you're offline. Is your computer driving you crazy? Is it slow or doing things you didn't expect? Well, having a computer crash or pick up a virus can be a complete nightmare for a business, so having someone local you can trust to get you up and running again is critical. The dedicated team of experts at Computer Troubleshooters Toowoomba West will put your mind at ease from the moment you walk through the door and will get your problem solved in no time with a 100% guarantee on their work. Laptops, tablets, PCs, whatever you have, Roger and the team can fix it for you. So visit them today at 236 Bridge Street, Newtown. Well, can't get in to see them? No worries. Just call them on 46 Four two one double three one, and they'll come to you. Toowoomba Troubleshooters, Toowoomba West, on the web at www.computertroubleshooters.com.au forward slash Toowoomba West. At the Gail Walker Swim School, they focus on providing you and your family with unique experiences in aquatic education. Let them introduce your youngest family member to a magical world in their water awareness program. The journey continues through a program of basic learning dedicated to safety, survival skills and ongoing stroke development. Gail Walker Swim School offers coaching, adult lessons, aqua science, a self-paced all-over body and cardio workout to maintain strength, mobility and flexibility, catering for all ages, fitness levels and swimming abilities, plus warm water walking. They are an NDIS approved swim provider. Gail Walker Swim School is located at 10609 New England Highway Highfields. Phone them on 46968908 or log on to gailwalkerswimschool.com.
The Criterion Hotel, conveniently located on the corner of Warrigo Highway and Mile Streets Dolby, prides itself on having the best customer service and a great atmosphere. They offer a full range of dining, regular promotions and entertainment with every NRL match shown live on the big screen in the beer garden and throughout the venue. The Cry is renowned for its steakhouse and for cooking some seriously good steaks. You can dine in a relaxed environment in the bistro in front of a blazing wood fire or there's the beer garden and the back deck. Get comfortable and enjoy your time at the Cry. Call them today on 07 4662 3303. Email lisa at criterion hotel or visit their website at criterion hotel Well, that's interesting. I wasn't aware of that. I, I did think that you were really relied on being online. So that's a that's a terrific feature. Um, in, in addition to to to, uh, to Newton itself. And just a, a quick question about um, the, the applications themselves. You know, word, the, the word processor, the spreadsheet, the presentation, um, you know, they're, they're all, you know, in a, in a theoretical sense, uh, an equivalent or an alternative to, you know, Word, Excel and PowerPoint in the Microsoft suite. Um, are they, are they as, as powerful or feature rich or do you see yourself sort of giving up of a few things that you'd like to see? What's the experience like just... If, if you were just to be relied on, on you know, um, those, those three software applications and didn't have Word, Excel, and PowerPoint? Well, so I can, I can say uh, kind of in reverse order, uh, from a PowerPoint perspective, I now use Google Slides exclusively for all of my presentations and, uh, and have been for several years now. And so, you know, I, I've used both LibreOffice as a tool, uh, the, the open source alternative to Microsoft Office. I've used Microsoft Office for many, many years prior to that. And uh, there are still things that PowerPoint does uh, that, that Google Slides can't do. Uh, you know, and there are, there, there's really the reality that be, because of the way that Microsoft connects the different applications, you know, the OLDB uh, uh, construct, those components really work well moving from one Microsoft application to another. And that's always gonna be the case. But beyond that, Microsoft uh, PowerPoint and Google Slides have, I think, parity today on a number of different levels that allows you to be able to use one or the other interchangeably. I don't, I don't particularly see I, either one as being better or lesser than the other. Uh, and, and that's not even bringing into account Apple Keynote, uh, which is the Apple uh, you know, equivalent to PowerPoint. And what, what, I've, what I've seen Google Slides do is really upgrade the ability to collaboratively uh, create uh, presentations. And that's been the real key uh, driver of it. I love the ability to be able to put uh, a URL up on screen and have people submit questions so that you can be more interactive with an audience. I like the idea of being able to take Google Keep notes and automatically import those notes. Say I take a picture on the road, uh, I can take one of those pictures, throw it into Google Keep, and that gets automatically drawn into uh, Google Slides. And I can share uh, a presentation deck with almost anyone in the world via a link. So it's pretty powerful. If we, uh, if we step back then to uh, Google uh, Sheets, uh, which is the equivalent to Microsoft Excel, if you want to look at that way, uh, the spreadsheet workbook type uh, application, Google Sheets has grown up. I mean, there used to be a time when if you were doing uh, heavy pivot tables, if you were doing heavy formulas, that Google Sheets just couldn't keep up. And, and so, and, and I think today, to this day, people who are uh, heavy Excel users, uh, you know, who are doing very, very complex tables, uh, probably should stay in Excel. I mean, that, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, but they're, they're, they have, uh, Google has done some really amazing work with machine learning that nowadays if a business owner wants to ask a, a, a well laid out Google Sheet, a natural language question, you know, like how many sales did I have last month? If they have their, their spreadsheet set up correctly within the workbook, uh, Google can now provide those kinds of answers in natural language. It can say, oh, by the way, you had, uh, you know, 4,300 sales last week. And uh, that's the kind of power that, that's built into a browser-based, machine learning-based environment. And, uh, and, is, and is very, very, um, it's very select. I, I've liked the ability to be able to say in a large data set, here goes a question, just natural language, like a human asking another human a question and for da the data to be drawn out and given back to you in, uh, in just natural language. So Google Sheets is, is definitely on par. If we then take a step back to Google Docs, Google Docs does have its limitations. 
you're not going to get the same experience in Google uh, Google Docs as you would with Microsoft Word. Uh, there just are there are certain things that uh, Google Docs yet can't do. Uh, but what you what you trade off with Google Docs in terms of the um, the web browser experience of some of the you know, it's it's minor formatting things that you just can't do in Google Docs yet. The 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 bigger issue is that you're capable of of collaborating with people in real time. You know you have real time chat uh, with people. You have the ability to to seamlessly type in a document at the same time with others. And uh, and and I don't I don't think that Apple or Microsoft have yet quite gotten that functionality to work as well as Google has uh, for uh, for anyone to access. And just the reality that most people have a Google account today, whether that be a Gmail account or otherwise, if you have a G Suite account, most people you're working with will be able to work with you because they have they have a Gmail account uh, or some kind of Google account. So that makes it really seamless to be able to do collaborative, uh, you know, development of ideas, documents. All together within within Google Docs. Yeah. Okay. And I I, I must admit it's interesting here. You're talking about the collaboration capability again across the presentation tool, the uh, spreadsheet tool, and the Word tool because I I think that is very valuable the way we work these days. Uh, the the other interesting comment I'd make there is that formatting in uh, in Word Docs is is uh, one of the things that drives most of us nuts because I I don't think you know, I, I kind of doubt that either either application has got that right. I'm always finding gnarly indents in paragraphs that are very difficult to correct, even if you copy the same format over the paragraph that uh, that, that you want to emulate. It's um, it's it's interesting. But look, I, I'm also thinking, Barry. I'm conscious of time here. We're a fair way in. Um, I might give you the opportunity for a break. Okay, uh, sorry, my microphone wasn't on. Um, it, yeah, we'll take a break, but I think what we'll do is uh, we've gone about 25 minutes so far, mm -hmm. so I think what I'll do is uh, I'll just break it uh, without an introduction to the break. Um, so uh, I'll just fade it out and uh, fade straight into a break. Uh, and uh, and then come back. Uh, don't really need me there saying, okay, we'll take a break. Uh, yeah. So if you guys just want to... Uh, now, we're already at 25 minutes, so uh, yes. we probably need to uh, wrap it up reasonably soon. But uh, let's just go back to you guys. You keep going, and uh, I'll just edit the break into it. Yeah, okay. Um, thanks. thanks, Barry. Ray, there's, there's a, a couple no, more things on. before we... Okay, okay, now. Okay, go. That's, that's great, Ray. There's, a, there's just, a, I think, three things more that, that I'd, I'd like to ask you about before we wrap up. Um, one is on the, on the security side. I know with a lot of businesses around the world, uh, data sovereignty is, is, is a very important issue, and, and obviously uh, Google are operating purely out of North America. Um, do, do you see a time where maybe they might extend their, their, their infrastructure footprint into other nations so that uh, the data sovereignty matter can be, can be resolved? I can't speak on behalf of Google, uh, but, I, but I, I hope that, that you know, there, there can be a global uh, coming to terms of, of data sovereignty and, and really uh, you know, a data stewardship so that people are able to understand uh, as as large technology companies, everyone needs to uh, steward the data of the people of the users. Of, of I tend to I tend to try and not talk about people as users, uh, you know. But but really, these are these are human beings whose lives are affected uh, quite dramatically by the holding of data. And so I think that technology companies, uh, ours included, need to be very conscientious about the stewardship of that data. And I, and I hope that Google. Uh, continues to push that uh, that envelope. I know that they uh, were one of the, the founding members of the Data Liberation Foundation, which which allowed users to be able to uh, you know use Google Checkout to basically download all of their information regarding an account and then delete it from Google. You know, uh, and they have they have really been uh, very forthright about the data security, data privacy issues that are uh, 
uh, inherent in using Google so that they can provide the services to you. And, uh, and I believe that they'll continue to be uh, you know, uh, appropriate about that, uh, notwithstanding the fact that there are some, some real fundamental challenges with managing data across borders. And, uh, and so I can only hope that they do, uh, you know, they do more over time to, to kind, of, kind of deal with that. Understood. Yes, and, and let's hope that they, they maintain that, that stance in terms of, I, I really do like your phrase there, data stewardship, because ultimately that's what it's all about. And, and these companies, as much as they're, they're very large organisations with great infrastructure and offering great capabilities, if, if we can't trust them with very important, very personal, um, potentially very damaging data, if it ever is, is released, then you, you know, um, it makes their business model extremely difficult to uh, to operate. Which gets me to to another point I was going to ask you about, and that is data retention and data loss. Um, I'm, as, as you know, because we mentioned last week, I, I'm not a, a big fan of, of um, having the same company that hosts my email and all my my files and my you know copies of what's on my hard drive being the same company that backs it all up. Um, what are the what are the backup options in with with G Suite, both internal to Google and external, that you're aware of? Yeah, sure. So Google has a product called Google Vault, and uh, and they also have Google Backup and Sync. Uh, Google Backup and Sync is actually a. We were talking a little bit about it earlier. So Google Backup and Sync is actually a a an application you install on your local computer, and it downloads your documents. So this is just talking about document storage right now. But it's actually it's actually backing up your uh, stuff that's on your local hard drive uh, to Google. Okay, so you can actually use it to back up things locally. And if the files are not Google documents, that is Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, and what have you, you can actually open those up locally, offline, with no internet access, and they are the native files sitting on your computer. So this gets a little bit confusing, but think of it as, as kind of like Dropbox, or, or uh, Dropbox is probably the best uh, uh, analogy. So Dropbox is an application that synchronizes all of your, your uh, files across many computers, or just one computer or two computers, and then it has a web-based uh, version that's that has it there as well. But if you delete something on one computer, it deletes it across all of them. That's basically what Backup and Sync does. It keeps it keeps all of your files backed up to Google, and then synchronizes that with any other computer that you want to. Uh, and if you delete it on your local system, then it deletes it elsewhere. So it's really not backup. Right? So you have to be really conscient, conscious about the, the fact that it's not aware of the fact that it's not backup. Uh, there are several products out there that allow you to actually backup your Google Drive accounts. Uh, Google has its own internal Google Vault. Uh, but like you, we like to actually back our, our systems up to external uh, systems. And while I don't make any particular recommendations as to which ones, there are several in the what, what's called the G Suite Marketplace. And uh, if anyone knows the Chrome Web Store, where you can install plugins and extensions into Chrome, it's kind of like that, but for G Suite. And you can find all kinds of integration partners who have products that can back up your Google Drive account. And I always recommend it to clients that you should have an external backup of your entire G Suite account so that you are uh, secure in the sense that you know things happen. You know, you have a, a, a rogue employee or you just make a mistake and you delete something and you want to be able to regain access to that thing at some future point in time uh, subsequent to you knowing that you needed it. Uh, so, uh, uh, so, so the reality is, is that you should have a backup of some kind. Um, we usually keep a, a separate backup of email. So we actually keep, we, you know, we back up our email to an external system and then that email is stored for some period of time and then purged and then a new flush of that email then gets stored again. Um, but we actually have a fairly aggressive uh, uh, data retention policy in that we delete email uh, aggressively over time. Uh, we don't, uh, dissimilar to what we were talking about last time, you know, you said that many of your business owners uh, kind of use email as your uh, as your um, a history of what's happening in the business. Uh, we're very much against that, uh, at least in the United States where we have lots of litigation and electronic discovery. Uh, we engage and guide our clients to have fairly strong policies for deleting email and keeping that email. If you want to keep an email thread, save it in, you know, PDF it, 
save it in some way, shape, or form, and put it into the client file. And then you have control over knowing what data is available about a particular client or transaction, uh, and then over time purging those files. There's just no reason why you should keep hundreds of thousands of emails over the course of a business uh, lifespan. So we do actually encourage our clients to have a data retention and an email uh, purging process, an email deletion policy, uh, so that that can happen. Uh, Google has, G Suite has built into it a, a function for being able to uh, delete certain types of data over time so that you can actually uh, be uh, aware or, you know, again, just uh, conscious of the uh, e-discovery components of, uh, of those things. Very good, and I think that's great advice. Uh, we saw recently one of our own customers uh, uh, found out the hard way what the difference is between file sharing and backup, and they thought because they were using a file oh, sharing service, yeah. they, they, they could they could recover files that were, you know, if they had any any um, problem with with their system and they were losing a large number of files. Well, it's fine, you know, it's on it's it's on SharePoint, and we can always go back. And what they didn't realise was when all of that gets encrypted, and that's what happened to them. There's not much you can do. It's it's all encrypted. Nope. So, um, you know, they learned the hard way that that file sharing services, whether it's Dropbox, whether it's you know, any any of those file sharing services of which there are many, um, they are not a they are not a substitute for backup. And um, you know, even even if you could, even if they weren't encrypted, if they were just corrupted, um, being able to open open them and, and roll back and recover a good version is a terrific tool in an isolated instance where you've got a single corrupted file. But if you've got tens of thousands of files and they're all corrupted, you can't logically go through them one at a time and recover, find and recover the last good version. That's just it's, it's the sort of thing that could take a decade to, uh, to work through for even small businesses. But, you know, as we experience, as we observe, many of them have got file sharing and for that reason they do not have backup and, and sadly I think many of them will find out the, the, the hard way that the, they're two quite different uh, technologies. Now I did want to ask you, I think one last question is we're going to have to wrap up um, pretty soon. Um, the the cost differential between you know running with Google and, and running with Microsoft. Do you see do you see much in it in either direction? What's your what's your experience of that? I don't know what the pricing is like in Australia, but in the United States, the the cost is pretty insignificant uh, in terms of difference between the two. You know, obviously with Office three sixty five, you're not getting all of the products that Google is giving you within G Suite. So that's kind of the, that's the angle that people uh, take when uh, talking about the value of G Suite. You know, you're getting uh, nearly 100 products uh, bundled together within a secure environment. And, uh, and that's just the value that G Suite provides. Um, but you're not getting any, other than Google Backup and Sync, you're not getting any downloaded software to your desktop. You know, it's all in the web browser. And so there is a there is just a reality there that there are people who are not going to want uh, something to live in the browser. Uh, but with the advent of Google Chromebook and the ability to run uh, your entire business as primarily we do, I mean, you know, I, I I use a lot of software on different desktop platforms. You know, I run uh, uh, Microsoft, I run uh, Mac o o Mac OS, I run Linux, I run Chrome OS. Uh, so. I run all the various, uh, you know, uh, platforms because I have to in my world where I'm working with many different clients on many different platforms. But the reality is, is that our entire infrastructure could run all on Chromebooks, and we would not be any worse off. So the fact that almost all the applications, uh, if not all the applications that you could use today, have has a browser alternative, a browser-based application alternative. Uh, you know, G Suite is a very, very competent tool. For being able to run a business very lightweight in in the web browser, and because uh, that's all that Chrome OS is, right? You know, Chrome OS is just basically a a, a Linux kernel based web browser, uh, you know, that you that you run everything inside of. It's fancier, you know, front end and connections, but you know that's what it is. And uh, and so yeah, so I'm I'm seeing the I'm seeing a lot more businesses going to Chrome OS. You know, they get Chromebooks. Those can run Android applications. So you can run lots of programs that you otherwise wouldn't have in the web browser uh, in on the desktop platform, 
uh, you know, Chrome, a Chromebook or a Chrome tablet now, and uh, and then run the Android applications to supplement it, and it works beautifully. And then that way, you're all you're controlling all of this through your G Suite admin console, and so you're not concerned about you know, does this employee have access to that? Because you can just change all those things on the fly on your phone or laptop on the road. Mm. Very good, and, and I just say from my, my experience in, in Australia is that uh, price-wise, I don't think there's a lot in it because I, I think Microsoft have been quite savvy with their pricing. So they make the bundle where you get the email service with the collaborative tools and the office suite. In, in Australia, that's about uh, um, $17.50 a month. And if you were to buy the G Suite, which I think is you know around the $7 mark, and then you still couldn't get away in life without having the office suite, which is what a lot of, which is a reality for a lot of businesses. You then buy that for thirteen dollars as a standalone um, product. So you're then up around the, the twenty dollars. So for a lot of businesses, they, they they're really looking at um, twenty dollars if they need if they're going to run with Google, but they still need the office suite versus seventeen dollars fifty if they just buy the the, the two products from Microsoft, but to your point, they can get away without requiring the office suite. A lot of businesses would just use the office suite, not because of their own internal requirements, but because of what their customers are doing. Um, and if, if that's not so essential, then you know I could see a clear uh, economic benefit in, in using, in Australia, using, using G Suite. Although then you have the, you know, the only other question that comes into it is, is you know, where your data is and, and if the nature of your business or the customers you interact with is going to have uh, um, any significance in that. But, yeah, I, I, it's, it's interesting and it's, I think it's a terrific overview of the G Suite. It's a very, uh, it's an incredibly powerful tool. It's, it's very feature rich um, and it does significantly simplify, I think, the, the uh, security and controls that um, business owners need to have over their over their technology platforms. Yeah, one of the things we haven't talked about right, right before we close okay. out here is uh, is actually Google Sites, and uh, that's the that's the web building tool built into G Suite, which also comes with G Suite. And so, if you don't have a website and you want to have just a very very simple one, uh, you can do so uh, within G Suite. And it's a, uh, it's you know obviously we're huge WordPress advocates. We we love WordPress hosting, uh, WordPress hosted websites, and and we're big advocates for, for WordPress. But for businesses that really just uh, do not have any plans for doing anything more than a few simple pages, uh, you know, uh, Google Sites is a, a very good platform for that. We actually use Google Sites internally as an intranet, very similar to say SharePoint. Uh, we use we have our own Google Sites instance where we then can share and collaborate with uh, creating kind of a, a wiki and uh, you know it, we have our own internal manuals and policies all published to our own internal system and so it's a completely separate site that only us internally can see but it's it, extremely helpful because we're just accessing it through the browser right no, okay. that's that's yeah I, I, I hadn't thought about that but that's a very powerful tool very useful. All right. Well, thanks, Ray. I think um, that's that's terrific coverage of the D Suite, and I think let's hand it back to Barry for uh, for, for a wrap up. I've, I've really enjoyed the session. Thanks very much. Thanks, Doug. Thank you, gents. That's been a really interesting session again. Um, now uh, we'll put some information up about your businesses so that people can see where to contact you. Um, now, next week, I believe, Doug, you're not with us next week, correct? Uh, for the next three weeks, Barry. The next three weeks, yeah. Yep. You're, um, uh, we need to feel quite sorry for you, yes? Uh, you're having to go overseas uh, through no fault of your own, right? No fault of my own. I'll be in, I'll be in sunny Cyprus, uh, where my daughter is getting married to... Uh, a, a gentleman from Donegal in Ireland, so um, we, we think that's a reasonable mid, midway point between Ireland and, and Australia. <laughs> yes, right. Okay. All right. Will you enjoy your time away uh, uh, over the uh, next couple of weeks? Uh, we'll 
uh, be talking to uh, Ray and uh, probably some other uh, participants as well. So uh, you have a nice time and thank you gentlemen. We will see you again next week. This has been Barry for Switched On IT coming to you live from the United States and from Sydney and from Toowoomba. We'll see you again next week. Until then, take care.